How to store the position and rotation of a thing and then restore it when you come back to the scene. So uh, I've gone over here, I'm going to look in that corner over there and I'm going to press the touchpad to exit, which goes to the, the same scene. And we're still facing the same way um, in the same position. And if we go over here and look into the corner, same happens. So let's see if I can quickly recreate that. So we have a scene, we've got a puppet. So the way this is going to work is we're going to have a tag in the puppet. And this is purely to get the scene space transform. Scene space transform is the position and rotation and scale of, of a point. So uh, this tag has this gizmo on it. Um, and you press triangle to reset it or just grab it with R2 to move it around. So let's put this in a specific place. We use the grid, uh, we'll just scope out and now I've got the grid, I can move stuff on the grid. But if I use L1 and triangle on an object, it uses that object's grid. So now you can see it's perfectly aligned with it. And now we can grab other things and press triangle and it will snap to that grid. So let's put the that dot between its feet, right at the bottom. Uh, Z is pointing forwards, just to demonstrate. So we can see Z is pointing towards this corner over here. Um, and it's kind of up a bit. And we'll give this tag a name so that we can use a teleporter. So then in the, uh, in the puppet, we will teleport it to that tag. And I'm using up and down on this to uh, cycle through the tags in the scene. And we want to match orientation and position. So, uh, but we don't want it to, if we just play time actually. There you go. So it's been placed at the correct position. But you can see it's uh, squatting because the teleporter, the teleporter is at the middle of the object. Um, but we want that to match where where this uh, tag's position was and the orientation as well. So let's use the grid again. And we can do the same for this gizmo. Grab it and press triangle. Put it between the legs. Z is pointing forwards. So now it perfectly matches this tag over here. And because the position is at the feet, its feet will end up at the tag position. So if we play time, like that. So to get this to actually work, we want to make a tag in the scene at the position that it was before uh, that we read from this tag over here. So let's just leave that off for now. So we'll need a separate um, microchip. This is so that if the puppet dies and gets respawned, it doesn't kind of activate this microchip again. When a puppet dies, it actually gets destroyed and then a completely new one is created when it respawns. So if we leave it outside, then it won't be affected by any of that. So let's add a node. A node, it just makes a little input nub over there. So now we can just wire that transform into there and use it in here. So as we talked about before, this is actually a fat wire. It has many colors in it. That may, that's because it has many values going through that same wire. It has the position and the rotation and the scale and the position has an X, Y, and Z or it's labeled A, B, and C and so on. You can kind of drill down into those. So we want to store the position in variables. So let's grab a variable. This will be the X coordinate. Let's make some more. This will be the Y coordinate. This will be the Z coordinate over there and you get the variable modifier and have this one affect the X input. I use up and down again on there and it goes through the names of the variables and you want to set that continuously so that while it's powered, it just keeps on setting it. And what do we want to set it to? We want to set it to the X position of that of the position, uh, which is the first value, the uh, A value. So we just wire that into there and now it will store 0.7 while playing time. So if I play time, it's storing that value over there. Let's do that for the others. 
Right, so if we pin that to the screen, we can watch these values change as we run around in test mode. So if we move around and jump and things like that, it's storing the current value at all times. So let's just use that for now. Let's let's uh, tweak these and make it persist in dream. Because I've got them all selected at once, and this is the same type uh, tweak menu as all those gadgets, then I can change stuff. And for most settings, that'll change it for all those gadgets. So now that will persist in dream, but what do we want to do when we actually load? What do we want to do with those values when we load the scene? Uh, well, first we want to emit a tag at that position. So let's make a tag at that position. So I've got a cube, so then we get a tag, we just put it on the face of it like that. And if we select it, we can still move that gizmo, make sure it's in the center there and uh, Z is pointing forwards towards the tag. We'll just remember that for later. So now we can use an emitter to emit that object. And we don't need any speed, we just want to emit it once. So if we set this to somewhere, it'll emit at that point. And because we've set the tag um, position to be in the center, wherever we put that dot will be the position that the tag will end up in. Like that. Cool, so we could move that around the place, but we could set the position through this scene space transform. So we make one of these positions. It actually accepts a regular position as well, so we'll just do that for now. Uh, let's make a combiner. Turn off the grid and set this to combiner to be in three numbers mode which means it'll make one of those ABC positions and then we want X and then Y and then Z Y that in there just to demonstrate so I'll, if I set it to continuous and zero time between emits and then let's just to make sure that's not collidable so it'll continuously emit uh, one of those tags at the feet like that even when we're running around and stuff it'll always um, emit at the correct position so we actually want that to happen just right at the start of the scene so for that I would use a timeline uh, it makes it really easy to time things uh, becoming powered and unpowered and I'm using L1 and right to expand it widthwise so that uh, one second now has all this um all these columns uh uses a lot more space so we can get more fine-tuned timing and then we see these columns which are actually frames of logic so we can activate this just for one frame by putting it in here and now it will just activate in that first frame so if we play time now it's gone to there but then we run around and that's no longer powered so that will just happen at the start of the scene uh, when we start to play time um, and if this was over there, it would it would emit over there. So now the problem is, this is immediately get, being set to something else other than what was already there, what was already stored. So we want to turn all this off until we've emitted that tag and then allow it to store again. So let's uh, just stick all that in a chip. Okay. So now we can... Um, unpower that while we're emitting like that so what's happening here is during this frame that's turned off and it's emitting the tag then it's doing nothing and it's allowing this to be on and uh, storing the new positions so if we play time so it's using that those zeros even though now it's storing that new position Let's actually test to see if uh, these stay persistent now. If we, we need to add it to a dream. Let's make a scene. Let's put that in there. Uh, but we need a doorway in there. Uh, so let's just add a quick doorway thing. And when we push the touchpad, we'll activate a doorway, an exit doorway. Um, Right, so let's play, 
and we run around and you can see it's been emitted at the center if we go to this corner and go through a doorway yeah it's emitted that that uh, cube over there which is exactly what we want now we actually need to teleport over there so let's put this over here so in that same timeline uh, we can place the teleporter um, after it's been after the tag's been emitted and um, use the affected objects thing to plug into the puppet uh, we've got to set that again okay so now that it teleports just at the start and then not after that so let's name this tag stored position and make sure the teleporter uses that as well but you've got to always remember to update the dream right so then I'll push the touchpad yay and it's restored us into the corner let's try the other corner cool so now let's do the yaw which means the rotation around that way and you can get that from the um, you can get that from the tag as well power that off okay right so we've got this orientation and you want the is it the yaw let's have a look so I'll just wire this into a number displayer for test okay so if I rotate it that way yeah it's working <laughs> um, so we want to store that as well so let's have another one of those so this will be your and I'll have another one of those to store it to set it Go down to your and then wire that into it and this will all work as normal now we want to use that when we emit the object so you can as well as setting the position with this uh, three number combiner uh, you can use a transform and use that to make a full transform so if we use that now that's using the full transform for the emitter and we want to make a rotation an orientation thing so in here so it's a rotation mode and use the yaw into the yaw and then we'll plug that into the orientation and that will be used by the timeline so uh, by the emitter so if we just gave that an initial value yeah so it's rotating it around so let's try that in the dream right let's just give this uh, this ground some variation so that we can actually know where we're at let's play so if I go to the red corner and look in the corner push the touchpad now we're restored looking in the corner in the corner uh, try over here and that's working as well but we're getting that uh, problem where the camera isn't starting from behind because we're actually teleporting after uh, the puppet exists so we'll make a timeline in here and make a camera so we can just have that oh have that camera there for a brief period of time and then just stick it in the timeline and it'll only last this amount of time and if we put it on to cut that'll make sure it'll immediately snap to that view oh yeah that's another thing if you don't want to have to keep on possessing the puppet turn on force possession very useful for um, testing stuff saves a lot of time cool let's go over to yellow corner cool and uh, purple corner cool so that works fine 
and you can actually, if these things are zero, uh, if I get a, a combiner in whatever mode, we can do that. And if it's if uh, the default value is zero, um, it means that these haven't actually stored anything. Most likely, if we actually move that down, that'll make it a little safer as well. So if that is more than zero, then we'll power the timeline. Otherwise, we'll just um, assume that it wasn't meant. To, it, we haven't stored anything yet. I'd like to thank Colvitzer, Hyper Dream Surfer, Hemlock, and all of my other supporters for making this tutorial possible. Check out tapjars.com to find out how you can support me in helping dreams creators. Thanks for your consideration, and I'll see you in the next one.